thinking about self-publishing and don't know where to start, join the Spa Girls each week for 30 minutes of advice, tips and resources. I'm Wendy Valor. I'm Shar Barrett. And I'm Cheryl Phipps. Hello. <laughs> and we are without the fabulous Trudels today who was at pro skiing somewhere. I believe she's kind of... <laughs> He punched off some bridge into some icy yeah. cold water yesterday, dear devil that she is. But we yeah. wish, she is a dear devil. We wish her a very happy holiday. Yes, now, exactly. today, uh, we're actually going to ask a question by one of our listeners, Rachel. Let's or are we going to answer, answer it? Answer it, answer but it. I'm going to read it first. Okay. Good. Then Good. We'll, we'll answer it. How and this is courtesy go? of Rachel, isn't it? That's right. Cool. So Rachel has been wondering about all the visual stuff that isn't a cover. For instance, how do you get nice branded coordinated headers from your website, for your website, your emails, your Facebook profile? Is that something an illustrator does or a cover designer or something else? And logos, question mark. For instance, for a series, again, a question. Or I've noticed some writers have logos for themselves. Do you prefer to use them or, have, or do you have one? Is a logo something an illustrator does or is it something that we can do ourselves? So that's Rachel's question. I'm throwing that over. Go, girls, go, Sha. <laughs> uh, so the answer is yes and. Yeah. <laughs> so um, rather than illustrate, I would probably say cover designers um, tend to, if they're creating covers for a series, they'll often um, mm -hmm. design the series logo as part of that um, process uh not always but that's often the way it's done uh and in terms of a logo for an author that's kind of a personal choice thing i don't think it's better or worse i mean there's a lot of um opinion out there that a, a photo of, of people relate better to a face than than maybe something um mm -hmm. an illustration or a graphic but you know um it's a definite personal preference. I Do know you a lot think of that sometimes the font of the name and just a little sort of sash underneath or whatever becomes the logo to a degree? Yeah. The, the, with the, an author, it, you know? Yeah, it can be, absolutely. I mean, I think it's the branding can be associated with that author, but I'm thinking also on Amazon you can have a profile pic, which is maybe, you know, like a butterfly with oh, right. Wendy yeah, Feller yeah. under a leaf. I yeah. think that's what Rachel means by author. It'd be more of a tiger logo. for me, though, I think. A target? Did you tiger. say? Tiger. Oh, I thought tiger. you said target. So like one of the bullseyes yeah. and then doing I mean, I was just waiting for you to go, what? You went, nothing was coming. <laughs> um, so, the, and and I guess too, for authors that are wanting to publish um, with a reasonable amount of anonymity, um, uh, maybe under a pen name and they don't want to use their own photo. So that's often why they do that. Um, and I think it's a personal preference thing yeah. again. Um, I really do. Sure. It's it, it's what works for you. Um, what do you share? Uh, what about you, share? Do you do? Um, well, I have a cute little logo for my cozy mysteries that uh, my friend Shah made. <laughs> and I don't. I don't actually have one for my romance. Um, I don't think I do anyway. But I do have logos for the books in there. And, like, do you mean um, the series? Yeah, the series has a, ha have logos, um, and so. Uh, I think you can, like, A, what, what Shah said, your person who does your books can do them. But there's actually also a lot of other programs that you can get to do them for free yeah. or, or relatively cheap. So I think you have to start looking at what you're prepared to pay for first yeah. and what you actually want because you need to have an idea. If I think even with a cover, you know, when you're going to a designer for a logo, um, you, you know, it's like, there's just so many options you can just go in so many different ways whether you go illustrated or um just your initials or the name or i don't know um a tiger. Did, you, did you do the like <laughs> logo or did you where did you get your logos done for your books here um so um different cover designers did them yeah um and i'm just trying to think if they all have them or not i know my billionaires and millionaires have them yeah, and um, so I think that was you, Sha, wasn't it? Can you do those? Um, I th yeah. I, I mean, we've done it a number over the years, and I think other yeah. designers have done for you as well. Mm -hmm. I guess I would say here is don't. It's it's a nice to, but it's not. I would say it's not necessarily a have to. I think mm -hmm. it's it's lovely as an author that you've got it and you can use. So you'd ask your designer for a separate file of that logo mm -hmm. over and above the cover, mm -hmm. but. Um, and then you can use that little, um, that's your, 
you know, yours to mm. use then. But I, I wouldn't get too hung up on having a series logo. You know, mm. it's something that you can change and adjust as you go down further down the track. I, I certainly, when you're starting out, wouldn't spend big money on that. Yeah. That's not going to sell a book, a series mm. logo. And to be honest, uh, when people are, you know, remember most people are looking on their mobile device. Most people aren't actually going to see that on the cover either when it's mm. in a tiny, you know, however many pixels it is. So it's a nice to not a must do that. So. I mean, for me, I I I have logos um, now, and I think people do recognise those logos. Like in the one of my series, mm. which is ten books, they'll mm. they'll look they'll, oh that's that that's in that series because it's yeah. a very de de definite logo. Um, mm. It's always in the same spot, <clears throat> and they know that that's what it is as opposed to my name that I don't have a logo with I think for me the series logo uh, seems to work really well because mm -hmm. people see it so there's two different things there right there's series logo or name or your brand yes, name your brand. Logo. so yeah. a lot of people have a brand uh, like I think you know um, I, I just started a new pen name and that has sort of Lani Blake has its own the way it's written you know mm -hmm. and, it, and, and it's sort of a brand that I am trying to do Mm -hmm. um but uh that's probably the only the only mm -hmm. thing for me is i definitely have it on my series mm -hmm. i think and that would, that would actually be the cheapest and quickest way to go i think yeah is to use your name as a brand like um decide what your colors are your fonts early yeah. on and your fonts yeah. yeah and and because that actually can change but yeah. um I, i'm i the thing i'm thinking of as i always do <clears throat> is um if you are wanting to put it on your covers early perhaps is better than later yes because yep. anytime you make changes to covers it will cost you so yeah <laughs> yeah that's true um and so just maybe if we could just take a step back how did you guys approach like did you give your designers creative license to design your series logos or did you have some ideas around it. So I'm thinking, for example, Cheryl, with your Maple Lane mm -hmm. Cozy Mysteries, it's a cute rolling pin um yeah you know yeah it's also it's a little cat actually cat. it's a mm. cat yeah so the rolling, rolling pin is iconic on the books mm. but on <clears throat> for the series brand it's actually um a little cat so um yeah. and that was um yeah um tanya my cover designer for those mm -hmm. she did that and um i just made a suggestion i'd quite like yeah. a cat and, and she came up with all of that and that's all she needed from me really because she had she's got a much better eye as a cover designer than I ever could have so yeah, um, yeah I mean some of you out there will have very um, particular needs desires or whatever and others will be like me and we'll be like yeah. <laughs> that looks cute yeah. let's go with oh, that no, that's great we'll go with that <laughs> I'm exactly the same, actually. Yeah. You know, like I very, really the same with uh, with my series. I just said to, her, I wouldn't mind a raven as a logo because yeah. you know Sinclair and yeah. Raven. And she's like, "Well, how about this?" And I'm like, "I love it." <laughs> <laughs> We're easy to please. Yeah, aren't we, really? like, she's like, "I love doing covers for you because you're like, boom, you know." But, but uh, the irony is that that series logo isn't a raven. It has got a raven in it. A little Has gold it? raven, yes. Oh, I did not realise yeah, that. Yeah, See, yeah. I had that. Oh, yes, of course it does. But it's got. I'm yeah. thinking of the. Um, you had me thinking seal. there. It's the wax it. seal, isn't it? That, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. Red behind but it. Exactly, and and it's the same for my contemporaries. They've got a little, you know, um, a little. I think the Rock of Falls has got a little uh, mountain. Yes, you know, it because it's out right. the mountain exactly. and stuff, yeah. you know. So, I think it's a it's a it's a great visual for people who are looking at book covers. Going, oh, haven't I read something with one of those logos mm. on before? Mm. This must be another one of those. Boom, mm. you know, it can't hurt, right? Another so, reminder. Yeah, it is. It is, it is. It is. It's another writer. Reminder. And it shouldn't cost a, a huge amount additionally, too. If you're getting a cover designed, it, it, yeah. you you would, I think you go into you know be specific about what you want the cover design and you would like a separate file of a series logo design mm -hmm. and at the same time if you wanted to have an author logo mm -hmm. you know one of the ones that you would use that that would be as part of it so I think the key is communication and be really clear about what you want from that service mm -hmm. provider and and in turn receive back what they can give you and in terms and of you're finding somebody you're, you're paying for it, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah it's not it's not yeah. all part of well mm -hmm yeah you need to be clear about what what parts are costing um, mm -hmm. of that kind of contract 
And in terms of finding somebody, I you know, we've said it before, but personal recommendations is a biggie and going mm. through yep. designers' mm. sites and, and seeing what they've done in the work, particularly in your genre that yeah. you are. Having a look in the front of books in your yep. genre and you will see um, mm. somebody has attributed the cover to, mm. that, to that designer. And if you like that, then that's a great way to start. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. So that's a nice lead into actually, you can do this yourself as well if yeah. you're of a graphic bent. So mm. maybe we can, what the other part was, how do you create these, wasn't it, Wendy, in terms of? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we, you know, we can move on to, there's a whole lot of things. There's website banners and, and Facebook headers. Okay. But, but the, the thing about it is, when you're first starting out, you know, you don't want to overcomplicate things. So no. let's talk a little bit about where we can go to make these things ourselves. Because yeah. We've all done this, haven't we? We've all made yeah, our absolutely. And stuff like that. So who do you use, Sha? Um, so I'm a Photoshop girl. Uh, I am self-taught, but I come from a photography background. So that kind of goes hand in hand with that. And I have done years of training and I, and I mm -hmm. still continue to do um, um, subscribe to, which will be no shock to anybody, courses. Um, but <laughs> just, I actually do these ones rather than just collecting them. Um, and I started off with Photoshop Elements, which is a program that is kind of like a Photoshop light. So Photoshop itself is so huge. I would defy anybody that to say that they know the whole thing. It's 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 probably the most complex software um, that you can use, and it's just yeah. But I love it, and um. And you can do everything in it. You can, um, you know, I design covers, logos, the whole works. But it's not something that I would say if you're a author with limited time, limited energy, your focus should be on writing. And I wouldn't say go off, buy yourself Photoshop and then teach yourself in order to make a cover or in order to make a logo because I just don't think that's a great use of time. The learning to get from zero to 100 is actually quite slow because there's a lot to it. Is but, it very expensive, Photoshop? Um, it's part of the, I have the Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, back in the day, you used to get a bite on, I remember discs, do you remember the disc? Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're showing my age now. And then, <clears throat> then it was CDs, and now it's all um, uh, subscription only, as most things are these days, software. Yeah. So the beauty of that is everything's kept updated. The downside is you're paying, honestly, I can't tell you what I pay because yeah yeah um, no but they, it is it is pricey but there are it's quite pricey but there's, there's pricey other options, programs what? yeah there are but just just to um just as an example though once if you do have that knowledge then you could buy say for example a cozy mystery logo and you want a dog on it there are, you you would buy the dog image from a stock site and then you would use you know use that as part of your logo so you don't necessarily have to draw i can't draw for peanuts but um yeah you know there's ways around that but that's what i use how about you what girls? about what about you share what are you using um so i book? am a big big book brush person because for me it's a one-stop shop i don't have any talent um doing illustrated stuff myself or the willingness to learn photoshop but book brush is actually very very I think right up there yeah. with easy, <laughs> like, you know, so yeah. easy. Yeah. Um, and I can do my headers. Yeah. I can make logos. I can make um, uh, ad ads for Facebook and um, BookBub and Amazon ads, all those things. Not Amazon ads, but, um, and what else can I do? I can do he headers for my newsletter. Yeah, and so is it? A, you just go in and you can. Is the graphics already set up for you? All the sizes and everything. All the sizes yep. are there, but you can also customize, which is really good for, for yep. if you want different things. And what I can do is I can make covers. Yeah. And I can also um, sometimes you can get covers that a designer won't make a print cover for. Yeah. And I can do that in there, so I can take my um, my e ebook cover and make it into a print i can also do trailers in there which is yep. pretty good um that's that's at an upper level so there are different levels there's um uh, you can get a free one to start off with to have a, have a trial or play around with then you go up to um i think i'm not sure what that one is but anyway the top one's platinum and that gives you everything that you could possibly need and um it, it is pretty good quality i have to say and very interactive tutorials in there is, yes is well. oh my gosh they 
look, they have um, things going pretty much every week, but every month, if not every week, um, on different aspects of it and how you can improve or, or even just how to do it, how to make one mm. up. They have lots of YouTube videos on it and um, really nice people to deal with as well. And you can actually save, I mean, I, I use it too, um, and you can actually save your series, you know, your graphics into series. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. and, uh, and stuff like that. So, it, it, you know, for me, it, it, I'm the same as you. Yeah. I really love it. Mm -hmm. But have now moved a little bit into Canva mm -hmm. um, because the same but almost different but a little bit better. I'm, I'm just learning it, so I'm not going to be the, the, the boss dog on telling you how it works. But one of my assistants uses it, and she says it's absolutely amazing um, mm -hmm. for videos and stuff like that. I mean, each thing, like the thing about I like about Bookbrush, I think, is that you can actually put, do a book, you know, like you can click on a book, put a cover on it and use that as a graphic. So, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? That's got so many great options with that mm -hmm. sort of thing as well. Um, and for changing your headers and stuff like that on Facebook, it's, it's magic. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think, again, though, um, you can also do a one stop shop, go to a cover designer and say, I need a, a header mm. or I, if you, if graphics are just not your thing and there's mm. something you don't want to learn, then you have to pay your mm. a designer to do it mm. and they will do some images for you or some promo images or whatever. I think, you know, there's a lot of packages you can get out there. Is that right, Char? Mm. Yeah, no, there yeah. definitely is. Um, and I mean, it depends on how your website's set up. Like if yep. it's a WordPress, it'll have like image sizes and you just need to kind of know what you need um, but again it's it's um, absolutely I mean the website images will probably change less so that could be something that you might want mm. to invest in whereas maybe yeah. Facebook ads you know it's something you're testing so it's you know but certainly um, you know gosh pretty much I would say more than 50% of the authors that we talk to use Bookbrush themselves or the assistants mm. do. So it's it's well known. Um, and I think the other important thing for those, particularly like Bookbrush and Canva, first of all, they've already got the um, the sizing of images or like the graphics for Facebook and Twitter, mm. say, mm. and um, Instagram mm. and those, you know, because they have each social media site has specific sizes and, mm. and bless their hearts Facebook in particular love to change things up so you know one month you are <laughs> yeah. it might be x and, the, and they also crop so they'll they'll hit the image will um, be um, what you see on your phone will be different to how somebody yep. sees it on, yep. on a desktop for example and you have to be careful that you haven't got you know half your book kind of hang, falling off the end yeah. and the, the beauty of book brush and Canva is they have those taken into account the other beauty of um those using those programs oh sorry just sorry <clears throat> i'm just getting ahead of myself in photoshop i um always google each every six months or so i'll google um uh, social media dimension sizes just to make sure i'm still creating my photoshop things in the right um right so dimensions nice. and sizing and that kind of thing yeah. um but the other really important thing and this is i think what um book brush and canva do so well is that they're already guiding you on the principles of graphic design and it's yeah. one thing to slap a pretty picture up in some text but it's another thing to make it look professional and i think that's what both book brush and canva do really really well is that they give you you know there's all different kind of rules of you like you know the rule of thirds and and the topography um hierarchy rules that designers learn as part of their training and that I've learned, but they, they, they guide you through that. So the templates are already set up for you mm. to sort of obey those. So you get a really nice professional look. I think that's that's, you're not that trying to jam and good. cut and stretch. No, and, and you're wanting exactly. to, and whatever you put out there, it is really important that you do the best professional look that you can mm -hmm. and they make it really achievable and as Cheryl That's said right. you know I think and I'm sure Canva does as well I have a free trial yeah mm -hmm. you know different people respond um to different ways how these programs are set up so one you might naturally mm -hmm. prefer than the other um mm -hmm. I totally and, agree plus you can do graphics for ads 
you know, like if yeah. you're doing Facebook advertising, you know, you yeah. go in and do all your graphics in there and you can sort of do three or four of your testing and, and yes. same for book bar ads. Um, you know, you can you, you can do your graphics in there and it, the sizes are set up for you. So yeah. you can go in as well as being out of custom size. Say if you're like Cher said, doing a MailChimp mm -hmm. graphic, you can mm -hmm. do a custom mail mm -hmm. size for that once you know mm -hmm. the sizes. And for someone who this sort of thing has I'm not a I'm not a gun at it I'm really not and so for me to be able to just go in and go oh wow it's so easy mm. so I, I would go to yeah. YouTube or, or and have a little you know type in how do I make graphics and blah you know everything comes up but in there the tutorials are amazing it's, yeah yeah Canva is the same Canva is the same Mm. Another thing that they have in Book Crush, and I think they do in Canva as well, because I, I did have a play with that, was um, they have some already um, made up ads. Yes. And all you do is you click on um, where the book is set up, like say somebody holding a book. So the book is actually. Are you talking about you graphics? Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, they, and you just click on the book yeah. and you can you can put yours in there. And yeah. it's just it's just as easy as that. Yeah. A click. And yeah. then now you have a graphic with your book on it. And yeah. you see more and more, I think, on Facebook now, you see better graphics now. Oh, all the time. So Maybe. much better. Every time you just look at a graphic, you think, wow, that's great, yeah. you know, but yeah. it's just such a professional look. And the reason is, and it is because they're doing it in somewhere like Bookbrush and doing it in somewhere. Yeah. And like you say, you can do it for free or you can do it for yeah. very little expenditure. Um, yeah. And there is quite often, and, and they have a really great stock image site in there too. You can just type mm -hmm. in um, background, I need stars, and a million graphics mm -hmm. of stars will come up. It's yeah. a same as if you just want an image of a really hot guy and who doesn't you know you just you find you put that in and you click on hot guy and bam there you are so in that one-stop shop ability mm. everything is in that one place isn't it and a lot yeah, of authors yeah. do it as part of the kind of relaxation in the evening and it might not be yeah. like that's kind yeah. of fun to play for a lot of people it is yeah. fun I think that's actually just talking of images um, it's really important that you do use royalty free stock yeah. so if you're not using somewhere that's already got it is built in part of the service like Canva and um, Bookbrush that you um, get the images that you use from somewhere like depositphotos.com, iStockphoto, Shutterstock you know one of the the ones that come the license mm. that is is for um, commercial use mm -hmm. uh, and and you actually pay for it do not google you know, image of hot guy and just mm. use that off. No. Google images, no. Because <laughs> if no, someone no. goes in and searches for their image and sees it's being used by you, they won't. Yeah, no, it. don't do that. No. Yeah. Don't do that. Um, if you are wanting to go the more DIY way in terms of um, like maybe you are a Photoshop person or you're wanting to go down that route or you're wanting to put your teenager to good use and get them to learn it, um, there's a couple of sites that I really like. One is called practicaltypography.com and they give you the typography rules in a really succinct way which is talks about hierarchy and how to mix different font types um type types um <laughs> uh, the site that i love learning from i mean you know you've got your usual udemy's and, and different um uh, places like that but i really love creativelive.com um for their courses i've got a lot over the years there and um, you've got constant access, and I really shock really horror. Those. Have you? I know <laughs> shocking, yeah. isn't it? You being a course girl, you can buy the courses individually. Um, they do have ones for um, not not so much on. I think there is actually one on book design for uh, using InDesign, which if you get the Adobe Creative Cloud, you'll have that as well. Um, but they have really, really, really good um, right from basic right through to advanced. And another of your I mean, I would highly recommend using what Cheryl was saying to make representations of your book. So as a 3D book or as a paperback or as, a, a, you know, on an e-reader or a phone, uh, book brush is fantastic for that. And I'm sure Canva is as well. But if you want to go the old school way, there's a site called covervault.com. Mm -hmm. And that's it's probably my weird pronunciation, but it's c-o-v-e-r-v-a-u-l-t not v-o-l-t v-a vault um dot com and you can download the actual psd file which is a photoshop file and create a um 3d book cover image like your book or uh, box set or whatever that way so those are for the old 
I don't want to say old school because I don't like to use the word old. Wow, but if you think back to when we first started in the business yeah. that we <laughs> oh had gosh. available. Oh um, my gosh. We had none. Um, yeah. <laughs> we had a book cover. But, that but in it. general, um, so let's maybe we could just quickly talk about though. If you're starting out, so some of the things that you're going to need are you're going to need a newsletter header. So you, that's yep. the picture mm -hmm. across the top yep. of your newsletter. Mm -hmm. Again, these can be done in um, the places that we've already mentioned. I just want to say um, before you start this, don't overcomplicate it. No, you know, no. I don't don't spend hours looking at the header going. Does this look great? Does this look great? Just get some email newsletters yeah. and sign up for some subscriptions and get those yeah. and have a look what works. Now, personally, as a marketer, mm. I really like to have the author, if you're using it, particularly if you're using your, your face, um, your photo, um, I think that goes really well, particularly when you're starting out on your newsletter header, just because it puts the person behind the newsletter. And also it just helps helps you bond yeah. <laughs> with the readers. Yeah. But again, this is not a rule. It's just a suggestion. So I'd say you need a newsletter header and you need a Facebook header. So a Facebook cover image for your author Facebook page, the one that people follow, not, yeah. not your personal profile. And if you're on Twitter, you know, Twitter covers are weird things because most people never, ever see them, um, you know, because you're looking Unless at the screen they click the whole on time. Your, yeah. yeah, but you could just, um, you can just do a version of your Facebook cover for that if you wanted to or um, uh, or, or your newsletter header. Um, and, you know, website? yeah, so the website graphics, again, it dependent entirely whether you've got a WordPress website, whether you've got, um, uh, like how it's set up, but there will be graphics there somehow. And it, it really is completely dependent on what, uh, how your how your website is built um i again i've said this before but we i personally recommend siteground.com and in using their free site builder tool which is we a uh, version of weebly uh which is a super simple drag and drop and they will tell you what and it already designs it for you and you just replace you can use their images if you want and you can also just replace those with a a graphic and again you can make these once you know the sizing you can do these in book brush yourself super simple yeah and right. i think that's where i'd start to be honest with you yeah um and also decide whether you want you need a good author photo yep. or as um rachel asked originally do you want a graphic representation you know yep. do you want a, mm. a cute illustration of mm. yourself that's what yep. some people do um, I, I think also it, you know like you have to understand you know like you can change these things <laughs> oh. uh, you know like as we're both I mean how many times Sheer and I have changed our author photos Constantly. or how many times oh, we've yeah. changed our, our yeah. Facebook headers and her face yeah. you know website headers a mail you know whatever um yeah. that's the good great thing about being a self-published author is you can pivot at any stage love yeah. that pivot. Mm -hmm. but you you can pivot at any stage and put something else up absolutely and I, would, I would say that um um, when you're thinking about it starting up, but even when you're thinking about changing, is to still try and keep the look the same over yeah. all the platforms. Branding, eh? Yeah. Branding. Yeah. And we haven't yeah. discussed branding. Um, no. Char, did you want to launch into branding? Um, well, it's, it's, it's a big a topic sort of and it's probably another podcast, but just overall, it, it's kind of how you visually, how people see you, if you like, how, how your potential readers and how other other people outside of you see you. Um, yeah. And that can be in photos, it can be in, um, you know, illustrations, and it can also be um, fonts and colours as well. So just... I'll quickly touch on the color side of things. And we've again, we've talked about this in um, previous episodes, but if you're, for example, a cozy mystery author and you look at say cafips.com, which is Cheryl's um, website, and you'll see that her colors are bright. Um, the illustrate, it's bouncy and it's, it's that kind of cozy mystery feel. Mm -hmm. I just changed it. <laughs> But the covers anyway, that way, and the yeah. and the site will look match <laughs> the covers, you know. So that's what a cozy mystery. So you kind of want to keep in the same tonality range. Whereas if you're say a thriller author and you're writing something very very dark, you might use a lot of blacks or greys or reds, which are kind of the thrillery colours, if you like. Yeah. Whereas you probably wouldn't have a bright pink. Um, I, I as soon as I say this, it's going to be somebody that's the exception. But in general, you know, you want to keep the bright the 
the same tonal range as as your writing if you like it kind of keeps it consistent that's what I'm trying to spit out (laughs) (laughs) Um, another side I just want to drop this in there is if you are not sure where to start or you're not really into color a great site is called coolers.co so it's c-o-o-l-o-r-s.co and I'm going to put all these links in the show notes and what you can do there is you can upload a book cover an image that you like and it will actually pick out the colors identify them and give you a palette of colors and you could maybe mm. choose two or three that work for example for your website um, and that's a cool way of of doing it as well you know that will really um, it just it gives you somewhere to start it's a little bit like the blank page for writing isn't it like where do I start I don't know what colors like a kind of yeah. like yellow but how does that work well the good thing is there's just so much out there to learn from right like there, there, there is there's just so many people that are doing it well yeah. uh, and so many people that you can look at with for yeah. covers logos yeah. um i mean just find a couple of your favorite authors and just go and just absolutely stalk them in a good way online yeah um and just like you know check out what they're doing check mm-hmm. out the colors check out i, the I think that is the best place to start and, it, and yeah. it probably is for most things but especially this because um, you want to be seen in that same sphere, you know, yeah, like yeah. you want them to be your peers. And yeah. if, if they look similar, not the same, but if they look similar, then, you know, their eye will be drawn. Oh, yes, well, it's in the same vein as, yeah. you know. Mm. This, this author that I admire yeah. <laughs> absolutely and also places like Instagram and TikTok and that follow authors look yeah. at, at mm. how they how they're promoting how they're using these things yeah. but um, you know as Wendy says keep it simple don't lose sleep over this yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you're not going to get it right straight up you're not uh, necessarily well, going to get it right my, I'll tip my hat to you because I got it wrong man did I get it wrong many times mm. we oh. all did we all did you know but it like, didn't, it didn't yeah. matter the thing is no enjoy being anonymous I, w- I would say I would you know? say and we're reluctant to say you must but I would say if you're going to spend money on anything graphic it should be your book cover first yes, and foremost yes, 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 rather yes. than anything else yes, and yeah. then you know worst case scenario you use you put that book cover on uh, I'm thinking say a, say for your website if you if you maybe you've spent your money on getting your book cover designed then use that book cover um in a graphic that you create yourself in yep. Bookrush for your website. There you go. Yep. Done. Yeah. But and, and um, also the thing is they are going to get to know you through your book first, more than likely, yes, they right? Are. They're going to find yep. you on Amazon and they're going to go, I love this book cover. Mm. I love this book. Where else can I find this person? Yep. And that's when they will go Facebook or Absolutely. sign up for your email newsletter or track you down on your website. Yep. So yep. that cover is vital right yeah and if you're going to get your logos or whatever make sure you get it right yeah, yeah absolutely because... most people aren't going on to just a random search for romance no. author, for example and google yeah. and then buying books that way the book no. is what sells you first and then that's yeah. when people go to your mm. website so yeah. You, yeah be gentle 100%. with yourself yeah um and I, I would say have fun with it because it can yeah. actually be really fun it can be exactly. also frustrating when you're looking mm. through 15 million hot guys on stock images mm-hmm um that wears off real real or fast. hot girls you know or hot girls or whatever whatever or you know hot whatever animal you're into to yeah. be honest with well, you no we've um, just gone that over the line no no we have it. i, I no. think she meant for cozy mysteries because i'm hoping that's where she yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. um, so in terms of like for example um if you're promoting a book if you've got a new release then a lot of authors do what they call teaser images or tiles mm-hmm. which is yeah. the, i make them personally as a square so you can use the square format on facebook and on instagram so you're kind of doubling doubling mm-hmm. getting more bang for your buck yeah. um maybe with a little snippet of of um fun dialogue or a, a cute um observation or maybe a little quote from a reviewer that kind of thing you yeah. can again do those yourself mm. yeah. um pretty pretty easily yeah and i think they're really cool you know like with, you know if you've got a quote and then down the bottom you go at who it's by and yeah. you know jake mcbride lake Howling, oregon or whatever you know like it's just saying who it's from i think those sort of things are really cool they're quite interesting yeah. um you know to it's also it. easier when you're scrolling through for example yeah. on instagram you're not necessarily reading the captions or photos yeah. but you're looking at the f- picture and if yeah. the picture's mm-hmm. got or well, the image has got yeah. text on it that's more mm-hmm. likely to, to do mm-hmm. it um don't do, 
don't put too much on there, I'd say. No, uh, don't jam it in. Again, those of us with border eyes. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and I just want to add, you can actually do your A-plus content too in, in, yes. in Book yes. Rush. Um, you know, and the A plus content is what's on the bottom of your Amazon book page. You know, when you when you mm. someone's got your book down the bottom, so A plus content can be done. And uh, it's got, I think it's got uh, it all set up templates in yes, uh, already does. in Bookbrush yeah, and Canvas the same. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. all we right. Well, I an, think just so, side note, we need to do an episode on that too. Yeah, we will. There's pros and cons on that mm. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there's pros and cons on everything. Mm -hmm. isn't um, that funny there's pros and cons on everything but listening to the spy girls podcast it's a plus mm -hmm. and why do they listen to us because they listen awesome. to us for the best tips and advice and resources over my goodness how many years we've been doing this. this and it's like all free nearly, and continues to yeah. be free so there you go mm -hmm. It's yeah. just uh, constant we just love but, doing this but if you'd like to help us out at all, yeah. maybe buy us a coffee come join us on patreon, patreon. Yeah, we have we some would... wonderful options there too we come have... join us on our special patreon facebook page yeah um we've got uh, emails that go out we've got we've got motivational mm. um emails like that go Sheets. to our patreon yeah. um patrons yeah. so that's at patreon.com forward slash spy girls podcast and thank you so much to all those that are supporting mm. us already on there yeah. we really, really really appreciate you Very it does matter it does. it does matter it's awesome right well i think we've answered rachel's question and i hope we have thank you rachel and thanks rachel. rachel come on and let us know if we've yeah. answered your question Benny, if you have more up. questions for us we would love for you yes. to come on to uh the spa girls podcast um spargirls.com find us everywhere facebook you name it we're just out there like just like we everywhere. are out there we are Sometimes a little too much. It yeah. Yeah. More than others. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's it from us for another week. And mm -hmm. uh, Trudel should be back next week if we can drag her off those ski slopes. And uh, well, that's it from us. So bye for now. Bye, bye for now. now. Bye. Bye.